Hello everyone, uh, this is an orientation lecture for the Australian Dental Council practical exam. Um, actually, we'll, I will start with uh, first an overview. Um, the, the practical exam will be uh, conducted on two days. The two days uh, practical examination will evaluate your performance of dental procedures on assimilated patients which are the mannequins in a clinical setting. At the start of each day you will be given first thing a set of dental models upper and lower labeled with your candidate ID and mounted in a mannequin on a dental chair and this will be uh, they are using uh, the Columbia Dental Form um, you need to uh, visit uh, Columbia uh, uh, website to know the specific numbers of uh, these uh, models and you can buy the models from Columbia USA or from One Dental in Australia both of them have these uh, ADC models. Uh, the second thing that you will be uh, provided in the exam day is the task list. They will give you uh, a list detailing all the procedures that you will be required to undertake for that day including tooth numbers and the surfaces and a designed practice tooth. Um, Actually, they uh, they will give you only the the tasks for 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 the day, not the tasks for both days. So the tasks for the first day will be given in 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 the beginning of day one, and the tasks for the second day will be given in uh, the beginning of day two. And the third thing will be given is timetable with attendance times for. The allocated tasks which are the rubber dam communication and radiology tasks and this timetable can may be given in in the orientation lecture which precede the uh, the exam days or it will be given in the first day of the exam examination schedule as i said there are two days for the exam preceded by an orientation day which usually is a Friday before the Saturday examination commence so it is a lecture usually conducted by an examiner it will be from 2 to 3 p.m. then on day one the practical examination is taught. First, you will have a registration from 7.30 to 8 o'clock. At this time, you have to uh, provide your uh, proof of identity to get uh, an ID which will be clipped in your gown throughout the exam on day one and day two. Then from 8 to 8.30 orientation and instructions. The examiners will tell you some uh, instructions for the exam and they will take you inside the venue to show you the different bays for, for you and you will be directed to your, uh, to your bay depending on your candidate number. And also at that time for the orientation and instructions they will give you the task list which we discussed previously then from 8 30 to 9 o'clock this is a very critical and important time we will talk about that in the next slide um, it is a day setup and model check and we will discuss that in details what we are going to do in this half an hour then completion of task list from 9 o'clock to 4 30 
so uh, in between these from 9 to 4.30 you will be given a break um, actually it's a 45 minutes break and you have to leave the bay at this time um, mostly it, it, it is around 12 o'clock or 12.15 um, so it's in, in the middle of the day you can leave the you have to leave the bay and come back when these 45 minutes uh, uh, ended the second day is similar to the first day in the schedule uh, also examination registration half an hour uh, then and there is no orientation uh, so directly you will start uh, there is also base setup and model check half an hour then you will start earlier than day one by half an hour so you will start at 30 and finish by 4 and uh, including 45 minutes break so now we will talk about the base setup and model check what exactly we need to do in uh, at this half an hour uh, first of all in the exam it is your choice to bring any of the materials you like or use the materials supplied by the venue but you shouldn't bring an instruments and you must bring your own bears it is recommended to carry with you all the materials that you are already using in your practice for the exam for two reasons First, first reason is to avoid wasting time bringing the materials supplied by the venue from the place they put however the place is not so far but it will be waste of time if uh, if you forgot to bring the materials at the beginning and at, at the beginning of each task between tasks if you have to go outside your bay and bring any material you have to take out your PPE so you have to take out your gloves your mask and your eye protection however you should keep your gown on um, throughout the exam if you are not leaving the the venue this will waste time for sure if you if if you are going out and coming back many times during the exam the second reason is to avoid any surprises from materials that you are not used to like amalgam setting time composite these materials it's better to use the materials that you are using in your practice to be familiar with them and know the exact setting time how many seconds do i need to triturate amalgam for example and so on so you will be given half an hour for base setup and model check just before starting the tasks as we said in day one it will be from 8 30 to uh sorry it will be yeah it will be from 8 30 to 9 o'clock uh, and you will start at 9 and in day two it will be from 8 to 8 30 and you will start tasks at 8 30. For base setup, you should arrange your stuff and follow infection control guidelines by designating clear, separate, clean and dirty zones. And this is important for infection control task. For model check, you have to do four things need to be checked. First thing, that your ID is labeled ID number is should be labeled on both upper and lower jaws. Second thing, the assessment teeth and neighboring teeth injuries. You should you should check the the teeth that you are going to work on for any injuries and also assess the neighboring teeth for any injuries. Because only at that time if you find any injuries at the teeth that you are going to work on you can uh, you can raise this to the examiner's attention so you can report that to the examiner and he can uh, he can report that in the form 
suitable for these uh, things. Third point is gums injuries. You have also to check for gums injuries, but only the gums also uh, surrounding the assessment teeth. Uh, for example, if you are going to do um, porcelain fused to metal in upper canine, it is very relevant to report an injury in the lower canine area, for example. So only you need to check the, the, the gums for any injuries near the assessment teeth. The last point is assessment of teeth mobility. Also here, uh, sorry, assessment teeth mobility, it means that you, you need to check for the mobility of the assessment teeth that you are going to do. Assessment teeth means that the teeth that you are going to work on so they will give you a specific tasks on a specific tooth a specific each task will be on a specific tooth so you have to this is called assessment tooth so you have to check these assessment teeth for injuries mobility and surrounding gums injuries and we will talk about types of teeth used in the exam there are many types of teeth that mentioned in the uh, ADC handbook and actually most of the information here in this presentation is taken from uh, the ADC practical exam handbook and it is very uh, recommended to uh, read carefully that handbook um, because it's very useful uh, actually the, the teeth that was mentioned in the handbook are plain ivory teeth cavet simulated teeth caris simulated teeth endomolar teeth and enamel dentine teeth however not all of these types came in previous exams only one didn't come which is enamel dentine teeth didn't come before but the first four teeth came in previous exam. However, it is not uh, um, it is it's not fixed that it will come or not or not in 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 the coming exams. They may include uh, these all the kinds of teeth or they may include only some of them. There is a post uh, on my page on Facebook. My page is uh, named ADC past ticket I will also um, share a link be below this video you will find the link you'll find a detailed post about the types of teeth used in the exam assessment tasks you will be required to perform 13 tasks from the following list restorations of prepared teeth class 2 composite resin restoration and class 4 composite resin restoration and class 2 amalgam restoration for the preparations class 3 composite resin preparation class 2 amalgam or class 2 composite res resin uh, cavity preparation only one of them full gold crown metal ceramic Pulse infused to metal crown preparation. Then endodontic access on molar tooth, fabrication of a provisional crown for a prepared tooth, clinical communication, and this is one of the allocated time tasks, taking nominated radiographs in a mannequin, also allocated time task and applying a rubber dam which is also a located time task for the clinical communication and rubber dam they are coming in the same day each one of them will take 15 minutes and the rubber dam will be on the other day and will be given 30 minutes then infection control which will be 
uh, monitored and assessed throughout both exam days record keeping which didn't come till that moment till till now didn't come in previous exams uh, the rubber dam communication and infection control tasks are assessed by examiners on site but the other all the other tasks are assessed by ADC uh, back in in Melbourne assessment criteria you will receive a score for each task based on the assessment criteria it's either satisfactory borderline or unsatisfactory most of tasks have three criteria to be assessed if the task will be scored as borderline for any of the three criteria then the overall score of this task will be borderline and the same with unsatisfactory we'll take the following task as an here we will take this as an example uh, this is a criteria taken from the ADC handbook uh, criteria uh, for full gold crown preparation you can see here there are three criteria both of insertion and taper of preparation preservation of tooth vitality and finish and margins uh, if you can see here there is ideal satisfactory borderline and unsatisfactory unfortunately uh, according to the new system now if you got minor undercut for example in your preparation which is only one of the borderline criteria and all the other criteria falls below the satisfactory unfortunately you will be scored borderline for the task so be aware of this and uh, try as much as you can to avoid borderlines and for sure also unsatisfactory criteria I would recommend all of you preparing for the practical exam to read carefully all these criteria for each task uh, which are in the ADC practical exam handbook read them carefully and remember them by heart because they are very useful in your preparation assessment criteria we will continue with the assessment criteria to pass you must receive either nine satisfactory or more with not more than three borderline and only one unsatisfactory or eight satisfactory or more with not more than five borderline and no unsatisfactory time management in the exam actually time and stress are a major rules in passing in the exam if you could manage time and manage your stress in the exam you will pass definitely in the exam you should manage your time carefully although there is plenty of time to do tasks but it goes so quickly especially if you are working slowly while you are practicing before the exam you should do tasks with time frame you will have approximately six hours in each of the exam days to do tasks freely without a specific order this is this six hours is after deducting the allocated time tasks which are the rubber dam x-ray and communication and the break time you should divide these six hours on the on the tasks given in the day which will be four tasks in one day and five tasks on in the other day which which actually is a good time so it's like uh, six hours for for four tasks 
or 6 hours for 5 tasks and if you exceed the time for for the task better to leave it so it means that you should in 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 your mind you should know what is the 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 specific time in your mind for for finishing this task if you have 6 hours for four tasks you know you should know when you will finish uh, each task for example um, we mentioned that also before in, in you will find it in, on my page on Facebook we give each each of the tasks the recommended time so it's like a time frame for each task just as a guideline to you to know um, how you are going to deal with the time in the exam so for example you can give ground preparation two hours in the exam and it will be uh, sufficient for that so if you exceed the time for the specific time sorry for the specific task better to leave it and jump to another task if just finishing of, of the task is needed it's better to do another task and then return to the incomplete task at the end it is also recommended to simulate the exam situation during your practice by doing tasks sequentially in time frame as in the exam so to do like a day one and day two and start in at the same time of the exam from 9 a.m. and finish by 4.30 with 45 minutes break which is called mock test you can do this mock test in your practice by yourself or you can do it in uh, a training institute uh, whatever it, uh, any of of these options uh, available for you you can uh, do it mm, stress management in the exam a stress is one of the most important things that can ruin your work in the exam if you couldn't control it the exam setting itself isn't stressful it is only in your mind I believe that stress in the exam results from two main reasons. Firstly, an anxiety and fear that you may make irreversible mistake or mistakes which may ruin your task or tasks or your whole day and this can be easily overcome by your faith in God and trust in yourself plus thinking positively that you are going to nail the exam whatever happens in the exam. Another important point, you must prepare yourself for any surprises that may happen in the exam, preferably by practicing on all the possibilities that may come, or at least prepare your mind that you will accept any surprises and you will be able to manage them. Another related point that if it happens and you do a major mistake in the exam, which ruined one task, it's still okay don't panic don't let it ruin other tasks as well forget about it and do your best in other tasks you may have only one task unsatisfactory and it is a pass at the end secondly time factor if you are experiencing shortage of time in the exam please don't be stressed as you may do a mistake while you are stressed which may take more time to be corrected don't work while you are under stress because of time at least for the tasks that mistakes might be incorrectable like crown preparation cavity preparation and endo task if you find that you cannot control your stress it's better to do some kind of I call it reversible task which can be corrected like uh, any restoration class 4 composite restoration class 2 amalgam or composite restoration be confident and work relaxed and good luck thank you all hopefully you find this lecture of help good luck